This is our very first award ceremony for this module in the history of Coventry University London campus. And with pleasure, we have got our guest speaker, Joy Leung. I don't know, any, have any one of you checked her video on YouTube? Yes. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> I know you don't. <laughs> when I first met Joy, it was in one of our PCC meetings. Uh, she was one of the uh, student reps. And uh, she is the kind of person, once you met her, you won't forget about her. And the following term, it was last term, uh, that is when I started teaching her in business research management. This module. That's when I get to know her a little bit more. Uh, without knowing what she does, you know, for living in, in the career side, I, were all, I was already impressed because for someone so young, so beautiful, who can just uh, get whatever she 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 wants like that, you know, we have a funny you know, way of saying it in, in China. The Chinese student probably knows this. If you can get everything you want with your face, why bother? trying so hard. Well, I'm saying it in a joking way. I know you're all young and beautiful. Don't go back to your parents to say it. I, I, I should stop trying hard because I'm beautiful. But yeah, so I was wondering what makes her to be so driven and work so hard to be a top student, you know, for someone so young and beautiful. And knowing, you know, after knowing that she is actually, when did you start your, your career? Um, five years old, right? Yes. And I'll talk a little bit about it later. Yeah, I was shocked. I just <laughs> don't understand. With full-time students doing nothing at all in their spare time, just focusing on study, I know many of the students struggle to meet the deadline and to, to do a good job. So I always wonder, how did she do that? Doing so many things and still, you know, being excellent in everything she does. So today, we have the opportunity to to hopefully have the answer from her speech. So please give a round of applause for our <laughs> I'm not fully recovered from my full and top yet, so please excuse me if I don't speak too loud. The microphone is here, but I think it's better for me to stand in front of you, right in front of all of you. Okay, so hi, a very good afternoon to all of you. It is my pleasure to stand in front of all the MBA students to share my experience. And when I was younger, I, well, I always loved being on the stage, but not when I speak. Only when I sing and dance. Speaking was a huge challenge for me, <coughs> but I appreciate every single opportunity to improve myself, to challenge myself, and to um, gain more confidence to speak on the stage. <coughs> so today, the person that I have to acknowledge the most is Dr. Amanda Mao. <laughs> Thank you for the scenes and invitation, and from what I can see, she really puts in all her heart and soul into teaching, and she understands her students very well. So you all are really lucky, and I'm lucky as well because, as she said, I was a previous student in the last semester. So to introduce myself, I am Jo Leo, and I'm now finishing my Global Business Talk Up program, um, which is an undergraduate course. So I think I might be slightly younger than all of you. That's why. When um, Dr. Amanda approached me and asked me to come and give a talk to the postgraduate students, in my heart and my mind, I was like, what, am I even qualified to do so? But then I thought, I need to be confident. And I think the only reason that I can be here to stand here in front of all of you is the 17 years of working experience on entertainment in the entertainment industry, and also the eight years of experience of uh, building up my own personal brand online through social media. So, um, to be honest, I have another very important presentation tomorrow for my uh, dissertation. And the topic is what I'm very passionate about, which is effectiveness of using social media for personal branding. And once I'm done with this, I'll be going back to Malaysia. Yes, I'm Malaysian. And thank you so much once again for giving me this opportunity to enjoy my last bit of learning journey in London and Coke. Sorry, I'm so emotional. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so I hope this is a great warm up. No, this is not even a warm up because I think this is so much more interesting and happening than the presentation I have tomorrow. 
but don't tell my supervisor. Okay. Now, uh, let me briefly tell you what I did in the past 17 years. I'm an actress. So I have done several uh, international movies, like Singapore's movies, plenty in English. I've done also, yeah. This was my favorite one from Hong Kong. And <laughs> China, uh, these are Malaysian films, where surprisingly we got into Japan International Film Festival twice. And then this was my first, first horror movie ever when I was 15. But I've done acting even more earlier, uh, since 1999, sounds like I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so in the TV series and dramas, these are those Malaysian Singapore dramas that I've done. And I also do music. So um, I started always singing, but I just got into acting at a very young age and I enjoyed doing it so much. This was one of the miracles that happened in my life, I would say. It, um, I, as I had my 21st birthday mini concert when I was, no, it was last year, but right before I came to London. And if you can see from the bottom here, mini concert YouTube playlist. Yes, I do put all my videos online on the YouTube because I believe that there are more people who, uh, like my fans, who want to watch my performance. And I also do believe um, the content that I share on YouTube or other social media sites actually help me to uh, build up my brand identity, to improve my brand image, and also to increase my brand awareness. And uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, so I increase my brand awareness across the national boundaries. So online versus branding help me to widen my network connections, help me to reinforce the relationship with people, to expose myself to more career opportunities, and also gain popularity and trust. And I want to say um, online reputation management is so important because your popularity, your reputation takes a long, long time to build, but it takes just one second to collapse. And we got to be very careful with that. If you don't protect your personal brand well, or um, if you don't give it a strong base and roots, um, it's going to be dangerous. But let's talk about the bright side of personal branding online. So um, let me first ask a question. How many of you here have Facebook? Where's everything? Cool. Instagram? <laughs> follow me, follow me. <laughs> and YouTube channel? What is everyone else? <laughs> and what about website? Do you have your website for yourself? or for your business. Michael, I know you have it. Put up your hand. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So um, thank you so, thank you so much for that. I like it when I saw the hands. There were so many hands when I asked about Facebook and Instagram. And that's why I chose these two platforms to talk about in my dissertation. Um, we all almost all of us use Facebook and Instagram because we want to connect with the world. We want to show our presence. We want to keep up with the trends. Thanks to the advanced technology. And do you know how many people are on Facebook nowadays is about 1.1 billion of daily users. And in Facebook World Country, it is now the third largest country in the world after China and India. So this is my um, website. It's just a very simple website where I want to link all my social media sites together so that when I share it around to the people, I share it all in one. And www.jogina.com is where you can go to keep in touch with me. And these are my Facebook page, my YouTube channel, and, and Twitter, Instagram, all my other social media sites. Uh, but today, because I know that um, you all have developed and managed your own YouTube channel in this past 10 weeks for a live project. So today I'm going to talk more about YouTube. And to be honest, hi, you come here. <laughs> to be honest, I just started to be active on YouTube uh, last year before I came to London. But I had my channel a few years back. It's just I wasn't very active because YouTube is like to spend with Facebook and Instagram because you need to put in more effort, you need to spend more time to actually make every uh, upload. You can't just post a selfie or an OTV on YouTube because YouTube is meant for interesting videos with creative resources and you can engage your audience in a fun, dynamic and powerful way. So from the literature reviewed that I've done, um, there are three main stages for personal branding online, especially on YouTube, reach hard, extract, express and exceed. <coughs> so to explain, extract is to find your key attributes, your key talents, 
your, um, your expertise or identity to create your personal brand value. And express is to establish your personal brand statement where you share online, you, you, you use the powerful channel, uh, use the keywords to find yourself. And exude is to develop social media strategies to um, build up your brand, uh, increase your brand visibility and influencing power. So for me, what is it that I, what is the content that I normally share on my YouTube? <coughs> so <coughs> this is how my YouTube channel looks like. And you can think about it. When I'm here in London to study for one year, and um, yeah, I have to leave my Malaysian career behind. And in this year, well, I always appreciate every single chance to learn, and I'm more than just grateful to be here to study. But still, I want to connect with the people, with my fans, especially my family, friends, and fans in Malaysia. And in this year, I couldn't really rely on the traditional online, uh, traditional offline media which are newspapers, TV, radio, uh, televisions, um, those that I normally do it in Malaysia. But I can't rely on it. That, so uh, social media is a good thing because I can have control on my own media and I can share my original thoughts proactively to get in touch with people without fully depending on the traditional media. And we can explain branding in, by using personal models. So, PESO means paid, earned, shared, and owned media. So let me explain a little bit about this. If today I want to promote myself to Amanda, paid media is that I will pay Michael <laughs> to go to Amanda and talk about the good things about me. That's paid media. And online paid media, we have uh, Facebook advertisement, YouTube advertisement that I'm very sure you skip all of them. <laughs> and well, our media is that I don't pay Michael at all. But Michael knows how good am I, so he just go to Amanda and talk about <coughs> it. And this is the publicity and the word of mouth that I earn. You can also do it online. We call it online word of mouth or word of mouth because you can share anything by just simply clicking on the mouse. Well, porn media is what we focus on today. Um, if I want to promote myself, I would just go to Amanda by myself and I talk about the good things. I share whatever that can help me to build up my reputation. And I use my Facebook and Instagram, YouTube to show her what I've got, to make her believe in me. I'm not that good, but I'm just using it as an example. So I would say social media are my brand outlets. If, my, if me and myself is a brand, Social media are my brand outlets because I display what I want to sell about myself, which are my unique selling propositions, my USBs. And okay, let's go back to YouTube. So um, I normally share my experience studying in Calc with my fans, and it serves as um, good motivation to them for those who want to study abroad or who are currently studying abroad, and also as I am. Um, an international student ambassador of Coventry University and a student rep for our program. So I think it's my responsibility to share, to increase the brand awareness and visibility of Cal, and to share my incredible experience here with my target audience, which are the young people who want, who are so keen to learn. So by just simply doing one thing, I achieve so many things. I brand myself, I brand Cal, and I want to get people. How good is that? So um, from the other side, you can see these are my singing videos. And I kind of uh, um, organize or manage my different areas of expertise online, where I categorize similar videos into different playlists so that um, my followers or my subscribers they know what to watch. They know how to find my uh, videos easily. For example, this is my uh, playlist for my uh, mini concert, and I also have another one for learning journey in London, um, motivational talk, and even acting. So similar to Facebook and Instagram, I use self-relevant hashtags to organize my thousands and thousands of posts. <coughs> so this is what I just had to do in London. It was done two months ago in my room, and I didn't expect the massive positive fans response when I upload these two videos. We call it JLS Q&A. And JLS is the term that, that, or a name that I give it to my fans, which is 
Joey Leung's Lucky Stars. I do think they're my lucky stars. Um, well, uh, the questions, I gave the opportunities for them to ask me questions. And those, are, those questions are related to motivation, to positivity. So most of the questions that they ask me are, most, are related to um, how did I balance my career and studies all the time? And how do I keep, uh, to keep myself motivated? How to be confident while speaking? All this kind of question. And um, each word that I shared in the 20 minutes video, I really made it. Because those are the things that, um, that really happened to me. And I know it wasn't easy at all to balance my career and studies at the same time at a very young age. So um, I received tons and tons of positive comments. And those comments are these long. So it's not just about nice video, or cool talking. No, they really express themselves passionately to let me know what they think about it. And they all respond and say these are the motivational videos that actually have huge impact to them. So I was so grateful. And look at one of the comments here. <clears throat> it's from Clara. And Clara is a lecturer from Calc who taught me HRM last semester. And look at how I replied. I really didn't expect her comment. I was so surprised. And what she said was, you are truly an inspiration to others, especially the younger generation. I can truly confirm all that you have said in the video is true and very practical, because I've seen you demonstrate all the suggestions as part of your own talk. <coughs> These are the things that make me feel really, really good. Because I don't want people to just come and say, um, you're beautiful, that's why I like your picture. I know that I have so much more to offer, and I, can, I want to contribute more, not just by showing the physical appearance. I, I want to look good, not just from the outside. <coughs> so through the fans' interaction, which actually brought us closer, I learned to better serve and understand my target audience, my uh, niche audience through this interaction. And this process actually helped me to find specific areas of improvement. I didn't know I can speak. And I didn't know people like to hear me speaking. So this is one of the biggest advantages of social media, where you can do trials and errors. You can test the market. You can target the right audience. You can even make a lot of mistakes, but learn from the mistakes. You can even make experiments on social media. Um, and over the years, I've gained emotional branding with my fans because I emphasize more on um, quality interaction with them rather than hitting the quantitative targets like the most of fans and most of likes. Um, and that's why JLS, they are, they are always here with me throughout the years. They stay with me, they don't just come and go and mutually we achieve something positive. And this is how I summarized my dissertation. Influencers are those social media influencers who have significant voice above others and they have the ability to influence others to make a change. So long-lasting relationship between influencers and followers is built when there are strong connection and effective communication between the two. And I'd say followers, uh, when followers are really inspired and motivated by the influencers, they tend to remember them support them and admire them for a longer period. And achieving healthy relationships is not a problem when, uh, with effective personal branding. When I did my dissertation, I had interviews with both um, influencers and followers to listen to both of their perspectives. And I was not surprised when the followers told me that, um, well, these influencers actually have huge, huge impact in their life. They help them a lot. Maybe not directly, but indirectly through their posts, through their videos, the pictures, help them to grow as good motivations, inspirational content. And influencers as well, uh, they mentioned that one of the biggest uh, reasons that keep them going is the fact. So the same goes to me, emotional branding, um, I know how important it is. The last two slides. Um, I just want to sum up the effectiveness of using social media for personal branding. And every one of you has a brand. And your brand is not what you talk about yourself, but what other people talk about you when you're not in the room. So you can't really control it. But with the help of social media, um, 
the content that you share online actually help people to understand more about you, to know more about yourself, and you can share your expertise, you can show whatever you want to induce some desired response. And individuals can go through offline and online personal branding to achieve a personal brand, which is your personal professional asset. <coughs> and social media acts as a lifetime resume because it records the growth, the improvement, um, the achievement that you've done throughout the years and your followers, which are your audience, they witness the whole process. So after you gain your online popularity, you then become social media influencers who have huge influencing power. And then you develop your own online um, social media strategies with ethics, hopefully. And you achieve your own personal goals, financial or non-financial rewards, what are the things that you really want. And some people could also generate high return on investment. Because social media is free, we don't invest money, but we invest in our own talents and knowledge. And some of the influences, they, um, they do aim more than just to, um, to achieve their personal goals. They want to do more. So they ethically leverage these powerful online channels to motivate a larger audience for a positive change. And this is what I wanted to do for so long. I believe that successful personal branding can also lead to corporate branding when the personal brand works with um, organization or owns her, his or her own business, um, leveraging the influencing power, the positive image, and uh, the popularity of the personal brand to help the corporate branding. And it also contributes to the industry development and has an impact in country branding in the long run. So achieving economic growth is one of the best possible, uh, future possibilities, I would say, um, for successful personal branding. So, well, this is a bit too far, but um, these are the future possibilities that I believe. So, um, yeah, that's it. If you ask me about the tips of online social media branding, I would say the first and foremost is to show your true self, be yourself, because it lasts, it lasts for like forever. And influencers who emphasize on brand authenticity and quality often last longer than those who just blindly hit the online fame. Second is to manage your social media, your online profile continuously. You really have to put an effort because social media are your fakes and you need to feed them. Third is to, I think, is to communicate your uh, brand value effectively and deliver what you really promise. And we all have to take the necessary online precautions to protect our brands and be responsible on all the content that you share online. Because everything on the internet is traceable. So, um, yeah, one thing that I want to say is the brand, brand's contribution to a better society can not just help to make a significant difference in the future, but also make people remember the brand. So, I would say spread the positivity, contribute to the society, and never do stupid things online. Thank you so much. Okay. Oh, it's kind enough to offer. So if you guys have any question that you really want to ask her, you have got the, this opportunity. Five minutes. Anyone? Yes, please. How do you manage your time? How I manage? Your time. School and career. Yeah. Thank you for the question. It's a question that I've been asked for years and years and years. Um, <clears throat> I started when I was very young. I started working. Well, I don't see it as a um, maybe I see it as a career, but I, just, I do it because it's my hobbies. And I made my hobbies my job. I mean, my job, my hobby. So I feel really happy doing it. So if, if anyone stopped me from being um, singing, acting, I might be very disappointed. And luckily, my parents, my family support me a lot. So it's totally very tough to balance both. Like what Amanda said, if you just only focus on your studies, um, it is tough enough. You all know that. But um, I think time management is the most important thing, where we only have 24 hours a day, but you know what you want to do. And if you have the things in mind, you have a plan, 
then you would go, you wouldn't waste your time too much. You would go straight to the point, do whatever you really want, do the things that make you happy. Um, so this is your, is there consistency in your um, growing your brand, even when you're like crosswalk and all these things moving? Mm -hmm. Is it consistent? So, do you have a timeline? Because the idea thing is for you to you know, <laughs> focus on your brand when you're free, you want to work on this, okay. push it to the side. How do you like that? Thank you for that. I know what you mean. That's why I said I just only started to be active on YouTube last year before I came to London. Because when I'm here in London, I only focus on study. That's why I have more free time to build up my online brand on YouTube. And before that, when I was in Malaysia, um, I need to spend time for filming. Sometimes I even, well, it's not good to say, but sometimes I skip school for two months, three months, which was, well, I think it's not possible to do it here, but in Malaysia, yes, because I'm a special student.